stick a move in the ring. You can hit me with the words you fling out. UFC flyweight contender, Jillian Robertson. How are you doing, Jillian, today? I'm doing great. Um, getting ready to fly out uh, to Abu Dhabi in a couple of days. I'm going out uh, early there, so I'm excited about that. Definitely. Uh, before we get into all of that, I wanted to ask you about uh, the sticky icky. I know you you participate in that. Uh, how do, how is that helpful for you in training? Because I've spoke with other fighters, and they some of them they don't use it before training or in training. They actually use it more afterwards. What about you? Uh, I'll use it both before and after. I feel like uh, not all the time, but it, it uh, helps with creativity. You know, you just get to be able to get into the flow and. Uh, you, uh, yeah, you just get more creative, so you get to do, be able to do more and uh, be able to pull more things off. But uh, and obviously, post training helps relax, helps you uh, heal. And uh, yeah, I'm a huge ad advocate for it. You know, with with training, is it more for jujitsu? Do you think that it, it benefits you, or is it just overall everything? Uh, definitely jujitsu, a hundred percent. I feel like it because uh, jiu-jitsu just in general it's a more chill sport and yeah. really the more relaxed you are in jiu-jitsu the better you're going to do so it's like if you're just relaxed and flowing and making smart decisions then you're going to do better than if you're sitting there trying to muscle and work hard mm -hmm. yeah it, it's just like it's a chill sport <laughs> yeah definitely definitely well let's get into your uh last fight versus courtney casey i wanted to ask you about covid fight week how was that experiencing that for the first time uh that time it was, i think we had two tests maybe we had a test whenever we first showed up and then we had a test on uh way in day but uh like this next time i know i'm gonna be flying to abu dhabi and i think we have like five tests on the way there so this one i'm like i think it's gonna be a little bit more intense but last week and last time i fought it wasn't too bad it was uh besides the two covid tests and we were just a little bit more locked down uh the fighters had their own hotel where it was just fighters they're just corners and um, so it's, yeah, it's a little bit more secure, I guess, but, uh, still protocol as usual with yourself, you know, with, with people testing positive all the time, does it alter like your, your movement during camp? Do you, do you feel more isolated now or do you not really worry about it too much? Uh, yes and no. Cause I kind of have a unique situation right now with, uh, Dean and Shorty and, it's just the three of us mostly. So it's like we keep our uh, training crew small. So we don't really work with too many people. Occasionally we'll ha we'll bring a body in. So we just have a different look. But uh, we have a pretty unique situation right now where we don't have to be working with 10, 20 different people a day. Going back to Courtney Casey, you know, you finished her. She's a veteran that has competed against, you know, some of the best women in the UFC. What does that victory do for your confidence moving forward in your career? Oh, it takes a lot for my confidence, especially knowing, like, she hasn't been finished since, I believe, before she was in the UFC. She got subbed once. Other than that, she's brought girls like Michelle Watterson and um, Cynthia Calvillo. There's a couple other tough names on her list where she brought them to close decisions. Where uh, So I'm very confident in myself that I was able to finish her. I was able to dominate the fight the whole time. And, uh, um, yeah, it's going to be the same the next time. Did you feel in that fight that you you frustrated her more than anything with with the control that you had? A hundred percent. Like I said in interviews before, at a post fight they were talking, and right as the, I got up at the end of the second round, she was like, "She's like a fucking blanket." I was, mm -hmm. I'm like, "Yeah, I am." Like that's <laughs> like that's all you want to hear at the end of the second round. That's just a huge confidence boost. So going into the third, I was smiling. I was ready to go. It was. I was just having fun in there. So going into the third, in your mind, in the back of your mind, you were like, okay, the finish is going to come. Just from hearing that at the end of the second? Uh, that and it's like the way that Dean uh, trains us, he's like, you're either going to beat their ass for 15 minutes and be like, oh, I ran out of time, but I was dominating that whole, whole fight. Or you're going to finish them no matter what. But you're always looking for the finish, always just looking to do damage. Now, you've competed in the, in the tough house with no crowd. But was the apex somewhat different did you feel the difference uh, the apex was definitely different because even in the tough house you have those few voices yelling still so it's like i still had the girls yelling i had um there's a small crowd there that's able to watch and it's just uh, it's still there's a little bit of noise there where in the apex it was like awkwardly chill it was just so relaxed in there. It's like you're in a fist fight but it was just so i, I don't know it's hard to describe the atmosphere you get the number next to your name 15 when you found out did was there a sense of accomplishment you know because of course this is a sport you're an athlete and you know 
a career is all about goals? Uh, yes and no. I, I guess uh, I've expected this just by the way that my record has uh, been going, the way I've been able to finish roles. And uh, I'll, I'll be more satisfied when I'm up there. I'm not happy just breaking the 15. I want to uh, move up a little bit more, and then I'll probably be a little bit more content. Moving up in the ranks, you know, your next fight, you probably expected yourself to fight another ranked opponent was that something that was in your mind or did it not really matter oh that was 100 percent in my mind um there was a couple girls that i was looking at that were just ranked just above me that i wanted to get the fights with unfortunately i didn't get those i'm still no matter what i'm down to fight anybody i'm happy that i got a fight and i'm happy that i'm able to prove that i can beat anyone that it doesn't matter who they put in front of me but uh i was actually offered a fight in august with a ranked opponent and but it was on short notice, so I'm assuming that's why she denied it. So uh, I would have really hoped for that fight, and I'm really hoping for that matchup after this one. Oh, so you, you said yes, you wanted that fight, but they didn't want you on oh, yeah. short notice. Oh, yeah, it was, I think, three or four week notice that we had. And, uh, um, yeah, I guess she wasn't ready for it, but I was. So that's kind of a, a confidence booster in itself, right, a little bit? Okay, no matter what, I'm ready to throw down at any time. I train every single day, twice a day. So I don't go out of camp. A lot of these girls in between camps, they take vacations, take time off. or And I, I feel like that was kind of the situation where uh, she just wasn't ready for the opportunity, but I'm always ready. I'm always going to be there. If the opportunity comes, I'm going to take it. All right. Now your next opponent is Pollyanna Botello. She's three and one in the UFC. You know, you look back at her previous fights. She's, she's fought pretty well. You know, what type of fighter do you see in her? Uh, I feel like she's fought pretty well, but uh, her three wins aren't necessarily against uh, tougher opponents in the UFC. It's against girls who either have losing records or who have gotten cut from the UFC. Uh, so I'm not necessarily impressed by that. And then her one loss is to a girl who is essentially my style, Cynthia Cobea, who uh, I can see the fight go going very similar to that one. <laughs> now, when you approach an opponent and get ready for that opponent, are you the type to study film, you know, watch interviews they have done, look at their social media? Are you are you that style? Uh, I don't obsess that much, but I might watch a film a couple of times through camp. Usually my coach breaks down the film more for me and he determines what we need to drill on. So he's really watching and breaking down things. And uh, I might just look at it once or twice just to see her style, see her movement. And uh, you don't, I don't really like to get too set on one thing because then it's like, um, if I'm waiting for a right hand, then in the fight you're sitting there, you're just you're not doing anything because you're waiting for that right hand. So I don't like to uh, study him too much. You mentioned earlier that you're in this unique situation with uh, Dean Thomas and, and Shorty Torres. What is that unique situation? Is it similar to what was happening in your last camp heading into the uh, Casey fight? Yeah, heading in, it's been since the beginning of COVID we really had this kind of situation going on. Uh, it's just Dean has his own house where it's pretty much a beta fight house where Shorty lives there and then he just flies people out to work with us and people who are good looks for us. And uh, it's just having a high level coach really dedicating his time to you and really having his 100 percent attention. It just makes 100 percent difference in your camp. And since the, we've had this uh, type of camp going on, I've just seen myself improve every single day. Who, who have you been bringing in to help you out prepare for this camp? Uh, for this one, uh, it's been kind of awkward, too, because we've been up in St. Louis left for Tyron Woodley because Dean works with him as well. So uh, I've been staying up there, and uh, we had Kelly Angelo. She came out, and uh, she we we worked together, I think, like five, six times while I was up in St. Louis. And uh, she fights for Invicta, and a huge fan of her, and it was great to work with her. In, in Florida, I saw that you worked with uh, Hannah Goldie, a, free, a previous opponent in your last camp. Did you bring her in for this one, too? Unfortunately, Hannah uh, has had a, sh uh, a shoulder injury. Mm -hmm. So she had surgery, I think, two, three weeks ago. So she's just coming back from that. So we have no work. Or other she would have been out for this camp. Now, you're, you you said you're isolated in, in the house. But when you go out and train, like at a gym, what gyms have you been working at? Uh, I've been working at Gamblers Jiu-Jitsu a lot. And mm -hmm. uh, they have probably like four or five high-level black belts that are just great for me to work with. And, uh, yeah, it's just great work out there. I'm learning a lot. And it's just straight jujitsu and then hard rounds and the people there are hungry. 
All right, now with uh with Shorty Torres, you know he's in camp, and actually he probably just flew out a couple of days ago for his fight. Having him in camp simultaneously with you, how has that been? Yeah, he fights. Uh, I believe it's Thursday, this Thursday. Mm-hmm. So he's out in Bahrain right now, cutting weight, being miserable. <laughs> uh, but it it's great to have him there, just to be able to have somebody who's my size, and obviously being a guy who's faster and he's stronger than me. So he's constantly pushing me and pushing the pace and. Uh, he just makes me a better fighter. So do you, so you, it must be m- much more beneficial, like you said, having Shorty in the house with you and then you got Dean working closely with you. This year, you know, most people have taken a couple steps back, but you seem like you've been taking like 10 steps forward. Oh, I've never been better. Like, it'll, I, I hope to display it in my next fight, but I feel more confident. Even like, Obviously, I'm a jiu-jitsu girl, but my stand-up has never looked better. I've never felt so confident. It, uh, my past fights, I felt like I was almost rushed to get to the ground, where in my Courtney Casey fight, I felt comfortable on the feet. I wasn't trying to rush to get the fight to the ground. I didn't care where it was. Where do you feel separates you from Pollyanna? Uh, I just honestly, watching her ground, her jiu-jitsu and her ground game, I've never been impressed. I don't feel like she has a high-level wrestling or just grappling in general. So, um, I... and. Really, any girl, I feel like that's my advantage. I, I don't think any girl can compete with me on the ground. So uh, my game plan is just to get to the throat as usual to see how fast I can get there. All right, so you see a submission. You know, Do you have like certain submissions that you would like to pull off in the octagon? Uh, there's definitely some ones that I, I, I would like to try. There's some uh, ideas that Dean has right now. Hopefully I can be able to pull it off. It, um, it's going to be a go-to move at the beginning of the fight. So mm. that's a secret right now, but hopefully <laughs> we can pull that off. Other than that, once I get to the ground, the rear naked choke is just so natural to me. No matter yeah. what, I, I'm going to find it. One thing that's interesting about you is that you've never went the distance in the UFC. It seems like that's like your your something that you are like you're focused on getting the finish it's like kill or be killed in a way oh 100 percent um what my coach in the tough house was justin gaethje and honestly his mentality inspires me so much and that's exactly how he walks out there he goes he's the same he's 100 percent either way he's either get knocked out or knocking somebody out so uh yeah i'm trying to be like that all right now um two more things before i let you go UFC 255, Valentina Shevchenko is facing off against Jennifer Maya. What is your breakdown of that fight? I feel like there's few girls at this time that can touch Valentina. And they think she's just light years ahead of a lot of girls. And, um, yeah, it's going to be hard for anybody that's in the top 10 at the moment to beat her. All right. So what do, what do you think the, the chances are of Maya taking it to the ground? Do you feel like she does have the skills on the ground to be able to submit Shevchenko? I don't know. Shevchenko's legit on the ground from what we've seen in her previous fights. Like, the way she took uh, Caitlin Chukagan, I believe, is a brown belt. Mm-hmm. She was able to dominate her on the ground. So I don't I don't think Valentina's a scrub down there either. I feel like she'll be able to do damage. All right. Now, the last thing is uh, Paige Van Zant. You know, she signs with Bare Noko Boxing, uh, Bare Noko Fighting Championship. You know, were you shocked and surprised by that? Oh, yeah, 100%. It's, it's just. She makes her money off her face. You got to protect that. You know, she's a, like, obviously she loves fighting and it's a, a part of her. I, I don't know. She, she still wants to do it and wants, obviously wants to prove a point by doing this, but like, you just have so much money coming in right now because of your looks. Like that's your huge marketing thing is your Instagram. That's where you get all, like she was saying she gets paid more through Instagram than she does did with the UFC. So she has to be making bank there. So it's a very bold move. <laughs> Do you think that she kind of had, she kind of has the critics in her mind? You know what I mean? Like the people that kind of doubt her in her fighting skills. Cause as a fighter, you can't let that happen, right? You can't let the critics get in, in your head, but it's, do you think that that's kind of the, the, the mentality right there? Yeah. I think she's trying to prove a point. Like mm-hmm. the way she was talking in an interview, I believe she was like, yeah, I want to show that I'm not scared to get cut. I want to show I'm not scared to get hit. And I'm like, well, that's not the point. Like, I'm trying not to get hit. Like, I don't want to get hit. <laughs> no doubt. Before she actually left the UFC, were you looking forward to fighting her one day? Oh, yeah. I feel like everybody wanted that matchup in my division. That was, like I said, she has, a, like, two, I think, two million followers on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So I was like, that's the money fight. That's the one you're going to get paid big for. That's the one you're going to get noticed off of. 
then who is the money fight now for you in your eyes? Um, I'm not sure if there's a girl in the 25 pound division right now that really has that star power. Um, hey, I know Mackenzie Dern, she's a 15 or she definitely would be one that I, I know she, she's a big money fight and she's a girl that I would be able to beat. But, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's really that money fight in the 25 pound, uh, pound division at the moment. Yeah, I, I like that matchup. If Mackenzie Dern ever does go up to 125, and that could be a possibility, that's a good matchup right there, you and her on the ground. So let's see who could pull off oh, a yeah. historic submission. And, uh, she missed weight before, I know, at 15. Mm. So uh, I'm like, maybe she'll come up, and I would love to take that one. All right. Well, before any of that happens, you got a fight coming up October 20, uh, October 17th, UFC Fight Island, Yas Island, uh Abu Dhabi. Thank you, Julian, for the time and uh, good luck on the fight and, and all the best. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Hey guys, Sasha Platnikov here, letting you know to tune in to SCMP Post Fight for all your weekly martial arts news.